Hello and welcome. My name is David Reed and today I'm going to be presenting for you on the topic of gross margin impact. The objectives of the seminar is to assist you when pricing so you understand the difference between a percentage markup over cost versus calculating a gross margin percentage. I also want you to have a, a full understanding of, of the terms as well as understand the calculations related to gross margin dollars and gross margin percentages. We'll also touch on uh, several different scenarios, but it's very important as a, as a business owner that you understand the impact to your gross margin or your profits if something arises. For instance, if you come into a scenario where you're dropping price, what is the impact that's going to have on, on the profits of your business? We'll also touch on break-even analysis and uh, understanding gross margin percentage or how to calculate that is very important in order to, to calculate things uh, like break even in your business. But ultimately, uh, what I hope your takeaway from this video is how can you improve your profits? If you're not uh, utilizing gross margin analysis in your business today, hopefully this presentation will give you some insight on how you could do that and, and improve the profits in your business. To begin, let's take a look at the definitions of each of these pricing methodologies. Cost markup as many of you, you may already know, is the percentage you're adding to your cost in order to arrive at your sale price. Whereas gross margin percentage is a percent you earn on the sale price of the items that you sell. Now below I've put in some formulas how to calculate the sale price in, in both methodologies. Uh, however, I believe that most people are using percentage over cost just because it, they, maybe they find it easier. While cost markup and gross margin calculations refer to the same thing, setting your sale price, the results, or your profits, well, they're going to be very different. I believe cost markup, it's almost like those images that create different perception. For example, do you see an old woman's face or the back of a young girl? Well, imagine if you thought your profit was the pretty girl and it turns out to be the old woman. Not so nice, huh? Let's go to the next slide so I could better illustrate for you on this chart. On the following reference chart, we can observe a couple sets of different columns. On the left, we have percent markup, and on the right, we have the corresponding gross margin percentages. As you can observe, the percent that you mark up over cost gives you a very different result in terms of profit versus using the gross margin percent calculation. Let's take a look at a couple of examples I prepared here. The first example highlights a 30% markup over cost. What this tells us is a 30% markup is equivalent to a 23.08% gross margin. In terms of profit, this means you're really only making 23 cents on every dollar of the sale price. That's what gross margin tells us. On the second example, we can see a 50% markup over cost which really only equates to a 33.33% gross margin or a th you're earning 33 cents on every dollar of the sale price. Clearly you get very different results. As a footnote, I've also added uh, some of the data from the IDA 2008 dealer fit data. The dealer fit data shows that garage door companies that are between 1.2 million and just under 2.5 million in sales, they earn on average a 33.2% gross margin percent. On the next slide, I try to provide more of a visual to this point I'm trying to make. Here you can see two lines. The darker line on top represents percent markup over cost, and the lower line represents gross margin percentage. To me, it's very clear that if someone is adding a percentage to mark up their cost, well, it's me misleading because it's not showing them exactly how much money they're truly earning on the sale price. So after seeing those reference charts between gross margin and cost markup, I've got to ask you, which profit targets are you shooting at? Are you hitting your profit targets? And are your results measurable? I believe by utilizing gross margin calculation to set your price and your profit targets, you'll be able to make better decisions in managing your business. Before we get into the calculation of gross margin percentages, I want to just reinforce this point. Recognize that sales 
and profits are the economic engines of your business. And understanding the fundamentals of gross margin analysis is key to setting price and forecasting the profitability of, of every product within your, your business. As well, accountants and financial analysts, well, they use gross profit margin to calculate and, and review the overall profitability of a business. So I, I think that in itself is important. But I've also found a statistic that, uh, from the Small Business Administration that, that states 90% of small businesses fail within the first two years of operation, primarily because many entrepreneurs lack the basic financial knowledge and experience in handling the challenges of their company in initial stages. Now, for those of you who have uh, survived and made it through, well done. But there's always room for improvement. And I think uh, understanding this gross margin uh, methodology we could, could further assist you in your business. Now let's get into margin basics. The definition between gross margin dollars is the difference between the sale price and the cost of the product or service. The sale price minus cost of goods sold again is your gross margin dollars. Very simple formula. In order to express gross profit margin in terms of a percentage it's a ratio. It's calculated by dividing the profit or the gross margin dollars into the net sales. Now, if you weren't aware, our industry uh, publishes uh, a book called IDA Dealer Fit. It's available once a year, and essentially it provides a wealth of financial data to help you compare your business versus others in the trade. Now, let's work through an example. If something costs you $300, and you turn around and sell it for $450, what is your gross margin? Well, let's put in our formula once again. Our sale price is $450. It costs us $300. So our gross margin dollars, or gross profit, equals $150. Now, in order to express this gross margin as a percentage, we divide $150 into the sale price. So you get your calculators out. Divide 150 into the sale price of $450 equals a gross margin percent of 33.33%. Now, what does that tell you? Remember, it means you're making 33 cents or 33 and a third cents on every dollar of the sale price. Let's now take a look at how gross margin is displayed on your profit and loss statement. In this example, we're looking at uh, a sample. This was actually from uh, IDA dealer fit data. Uh, but essentially, we're looking at the sales here, net sales of $852,700, minus your cost of goods sold of $512,800, equals a gross margin of $339,900. Again, dividing your gross margin into net sales will give us a 39.9% gross margin percentage. In this next slide, what I'd like to do is illustrate the difference between cost markup and gross margin percentage on a specific door. So first we have here a 16 by 7 that costs $350 and the dealer adds 25% markup over that cost. So to calculate that, it's $350 times 1.25% which equals a sale price of $437.50 a profit of $87.50. What this 25% markup doesn't tell me is exactly what it relates to unless I calculate that out. In the case of gross margin percentage, that same door costs us $350. We had 25% gross margin. And immediately, I know I'm making 25 cents on every dollar of the sale price. But here, here's the formula. Cost divided by one minus the gross margin percentage equals $466.66, a profit of $116.66. Using a 25% gross margin versus percent markup to calculate price, you earn $29.16 and more profit on that sale. Well, as you can tell by now, I'm a strong proponent of calculating price, profits, and analyzing a business based on gross margin. In order to make sure you fully comprehend this topic, Please get a pad of paper, a pen, and a calculator. We've got some numbers to calculate. So in this next example, we've got a sale price of $750. Cost of goods sold is 
and a gross margin of $300. What is the gross margin percentage? Again, follow that formula, gross margin dollars divided in the sale price will give you a gross margin of 40%. So when you hear someone refer to, I made 40% or 40% margin or 40 points on the sale, what they're referring to is they made 40 cents on every dollar of the sale price. In this next example, we've got a cost of goods sold of $450. How do you calculate your sale price if you want to earn a 40% gross margin? Again, there's our formula. The cost divided by 1 minus the gross margin percentage, which is 40%, that will equal your sale price. There's your calculation. $450 divided by 1 minus 0.4, which is a 0.6, equals $750. So that tells me if the sale price is $750, by selling it at that, at that price, I'm making 40 points or 40% gross margin. 40 cents on every dollar of that sale price is, is a gross margin profit. Now let's do the check. Sale price times a gross margin percentage equals a gross margin dollars. At a sale price of $750 times 0.4, which is your gross margin, equals $300. So up in this spot here, we could add $300. What I would suggest is write down this formula. Cost divided by 1 minus your gross margin percentage equals your sale price. I think this is the elusive point where many small business owners believe that gross margin is, is difficult to calculate. Now let's work through an example in which we drop price and see the impact to the gross margin. In this example, we've got a standard sale price of $466.66. Our cost of goods sold is $350. So what happens when we drop price by 10%? Well, let's see. First we need to calculate what is the new price. You'd multiply your sale price times 1 minus the discount rate, which we'd fill in 0.1 there, to equal the new price. And here I've done the calculation for you. 466.66, the sale price, minus 10%, or multiplying it times a 0.9, you get 419.99. This is your new sale price. Now the cost of goods sold didn't change, it's still $350. So when you take the difference, your new gross margin, or gross profit dollars, is $69.99. Or 16.66% is your margin in, in terms of a percentage. So the question you should ask yourself is, should you drop your price to win the sale? And my reply would be, it depends. And we'll get into some different scenarios here in a little bit. Uh, but in particular, I want you to, to recognize, before dropping price, understand what is the impact, the true impact to your margin dollars in, that, in your percentage. Um, just a quick comment from, from Jeff Mick. He says, you always really want to focus on the margin dollars. Dollars are what you put in the bank, not percentages. However, in, in, in this case, you've just lowered your gross margin dollars from $116.67 to $69.99. That's a 40% reduction in gross margin dollars by dropping your price 10%. That's significant. After going through that last example, I'd like to revert back to basics with, with margin. One of the things I just want to point out to you if, you, if you are making concessions with price, you're lowering your price in the market, this is going to have an impact on your gross margin dollars and your gross margin percent you will need to make up these margin dollars in some way in order to pay for your operating expenses in the business as well provide for the desired level of quality of life or, or paycheck that you receive from the business today at this juncture you have three options one is to sell more volume to make up the lost margin dollars two you can sell higher margin jobs or products with higher profit margins or three you could cut operating expenses which is not always a desirable thing to do in, in a small business, but uh, those are your options. Another point I like to drive home, uh, which is margin basics, I would call it, is uh, with regards to your profit margins on different products and services. Uh, you can have different profit margins depending on the products and services you're offering. Your product 
or your, your profit level does not have to be the same consistently throughout the business. Um, in this example, let's assume that your market or demand, uh, your, your customers are, are asking for a 25 gauge pan door. Everyone offers this same door and everyone has the same service level. So what do you think is going to happen to your margins? Well, they're going to be squeezed. So in order to, to try and earn a higher profit level, you need to differentiate your product and your services. Perhaps it's adding windows or offering a, a, a different, different models with, within your, your sales process. It could be colors, stamps, or other services that make your business uh, unique and, and different for the consumer. By offering a different stamp design in Windows, you not only offer something different from your competition, but you've now allowed yourself the opportunity to make a higher gross margin, a higher profit level. So be aware of that. Again, I'm reminding you, you must set different profit margins, gross margin percentage, for different product categories and different services you offer. Now let's move on to look at some other opportunities uh, when evaluating margin. In this example, you have three separate opportunities that present themselves. Which job appears more appealing to you? In option A, you have a builder who needs 40 16 by 7s. You're going to earn 15% gross margin at a total sale, total sale price of $16,000. If you still have your calculator and pen and paper, please try and write these numbers out here just for practice. On option B, you have 15 retrofit jobs in the same area that gives you a 35% margin on a sale of $8,000. In option C, you have an opportunity to sell four classic doors and four garage door openers for a sale price of $7,000 at 45% gross margin. So take a second here if, if you want to hit pause on the video and do your calculations. Which opportunity provides the most gross margin dollars for your business. Option A provides a gross margin profit uh, of $2,400. Option B provides $2,800 in profit. And option C is $3,150. Now, it doesn't take a, a scientist to figure out that installing four doors and four operators is a lot faster than 40 doors for this builder. And you probably have a, a better chance of getting paid faster on, on this sale. Now I recognize that you're going to have various opportunities that are out there, but I want you to look at your job opportunities and, and your service work and try and identify what are the profit levels and, again, where are you better utilizing your assets, your people, in order to bring in gross margin dollars for the business. In this next example, uh, we have a scenario in which you have pricing factory direct um, as well as from the door center. If you order factory direct, you can save 10%. How should you order? Well, in this scenario, you have a cost of $350, and you're currently adding 25% margin to create your sale price. So we've already been through these examples. We're going to first find our sale price. We divide 350 into 0.75 gives us 466.66. So if this is our sale price, our current margin on this is sale price minus cost gives us $116.66. So if you take advantage of your direct pricing, your cost per door is now 350 times 0.9 equals $315. So if we do the math, 466 is our sale price. Our new cost is $315. Means our new gross margin dollars is $151.66. By taking advantage of factory direct pricing, you can earn $35 more per door. This would increase your gross margin percent from 25 to 32 and a half percent. In this next example of impact to gross margin, we have a situation where an installer picks up some product at a door center, drives 45 minutes away to a job site, begins the install, and then realizes he forgot to pick something up. Immediately, a red light should go off in your business because this is costing you money. 
whether you recognize it or not, it's, it's costing you some money and you should be aware of this. In this example, we're, we're looking at a situation where an 8x7 door is, is being installed. You had calculated the price to, to earn a 25% gross margin. And we could see that the margin dollars would be $116.66. However, when you factor in uh, these uh, additional expenses where the installer has to drive back uh, to and from, uh, back to the door center, get product, and, and get back out of the job site, uh, I'm here I'm estimating a, a, a labor rate at 15 bucks an hour. Uh, just that, that time right there is 22.50. Uh, if you add in vehicle expenses uh, across town, uh, gas, insurance, etc., another 10 bucks. Plus, there's opportunity costs. This this installer could uh, have have been doing something more productive and in, in earning you uh, further margin dollars for the business had he been installing. So, be very aware of of errors like this because they could be costly for the business. Now that we understand gross margin analysis, uh, how, how to make these calculations, let's take a look at break-even analysis. Break-even analysis is a tool used to determine when a business will be able to cover all of its expenses, operating expenses, and begin to make a profit. At the organization's break-even sales volume, total sales price equals total cost, or your total gross margin dollars equals operating expense dollars. In order to take a better look at break-even analysis, I put up a, a basically top half of a P&L here where we've already looked at the sales, the cost of goods sold, and the calculation of your gross margin. Again, sales minus your cost of goods equals your margin. And when you divide your margin into net sales, you get a 39.9% in this example. Um, I also want to point out just uh, that this would be a year-to-day total uh, accumulation of sales. And in this column, everything is divided into net sales, so you know what uh, your your cost of goods as a uh, as a percentage of sales. And further on down in your profit and loss statement, uh, you should also be showing your expenses as a percentage of of, of net sales. Um, however, below uh, the, the bottom half of the profit and loss statement uh, would be your operating expenses, rent, salaries. Uh, and further expense of advertising expense, utilities, uh, etc. Uh, once you deduct those, you get your operating income. And that's actually operating income before tax. You still have to pay tax on, on your bottom line. Uh, however, what, what would the scenario be if you had operating expenses as a percentage of sales that were higher than your gross margin percent? Well, I think it's easy to figure out. You'd, you'd be spending more on operating your business than what you're taking in. In this particular case, I'm, I'm actually illustrating again with a fictitious P&L, but um, here it's showing uh, yearly net sales minus your cost of goods equals your gross margin percentage, and we're showing uh, $305,000 uh, with a 35.8% uh, gross profit margin in your percentage. Here's your list of expenses going down the line and your total overhead or overhead expenditures is nearly $305,000 as well. So because your margin dollars are 305, your expense is around 305, your percentages, again, they're going to work out to the same because they're all divided by a percentage of net sales. This is pretty close to break even. I mean, here it's showing a, a profit of 510 bucks, but we'll just call it break even for, for simplicity. Um, and so that, that last example was, trying to point out is if your expenses as a percentage of sales is higher than your gross margin percent, well you're spending spending too much money in running your business. So either expenses have to come down or you got to bring your margin dollars up. In this next slide, let's take a closer look at the calculation of break-even analysis. In order to calculate your break-even, you need to know or at least have an educated guess about your sales revenue, your gross margin dollars, gross margin percentage and the fixed costs or uh, investment costs in, involved in this break-even analysis. Here's the formula and this is one to write down. Fixed costs divided by the gross margin percentage equals the break-even. I'm going to go through a, a scenario here 
in which we have a dealer who is considering hiring an installer. Uh, needs to also invest in truck tools and equipment at a cost of $85,000 on a, let's just call it an annual basis. His business currently runs on a blended gross margin at 35%. How much in new sales is required to break even on this new hire? Well, if you do the plug in your, your data into this formula, fixed cost was $85,000 for salary, truck, tools, and equipment divided into the blended margin that you're currently earning in the business at 35% means that $242,857 in new sales are required to break even and justify hiring this new new installer. If you're not going to increase your sales volume by this amount then I would question whether or not this uh, additional expense is, is really needed for the business. So we just went through one example of how break-even analysis can assist you in your business. Again, there's that formula, and I've kind of simplified into layman's term. Cash dollars out of pocket divided into your blended gross margin or your average gross margin per month equals the sales required to break even. Remember, this is you're not making any money when your sales levels are break even. So in this example, uh, we're going to find out the break even. Uh, sales level uh, on a monthly basis. Your monthly operating expenses run $25,000 per month and your blended margin is 35%. If you divide 25,000 in 2.35 percent means you need sales of $71,428.57 per month in, in sales to break even. If you break that down, divide that by four weeks in a month means you need $17,857 per week in sales in order to break even. So now what I'd like you to do is uh, write, jot down this, this formula and plug in your own numbers to figure out what is how many days into the month does it take you to break even. So now that you understand uh, calculation of gross margin, dollars, percentages, um, that's actually the, the next step um, and it's homework for you. <laughs> Find out what your current gross margins are when you're quoting and setting up your pricing. And I've listed some steps here to create a spreadsheet. You're going to add in your material costs and your labor costs to determine your total cost installed. And then you're going to deduct that from your sale price to get your gross margin dollars. And again, dividing your gross margin dollars into your sale price, you're going to get your gross margin percentage. And you're going to most likely find that your gross margin percent varies by door size, by model, or maybe even by type of service depending on what you're quoting. And my suggestion, this last bullet point is, if possible, uh, for your future pricing, is round up your gross margin. And this is basically to ensure that you're, con you're uh, quoting a consistent uh, profit margin within your pricing methodology. This next slide shows actually those instructions that I just provided you. That's why I kind of went through a little bit fast. But you're going to download your dealer costs from AMAR's WebCat, which is now all of your pricing is loaded up on amardealer.com and check your webcat. If you're unfamiliar with that, great new service and uh, that, that's available there on, on amardealer.com. Uh, you get your username and, and password uh, uh, by going on to, to the website and you, you'll be able to, to download all that information. But essentially here's your material costs uh, that I provided and uh, put into this uh, fictitious uh, spreadsheet here. But uh, you got your door costs, punched angle, inside lock, uh, vinyl T-stop. In this particular case, I even created these cells, so you've got a freight factor that's adding up and summing up the total material cost. Here's uh, labor costs, and in this case, I gave the installer a rate of 15 bucks an hour times three hours to get 45 bucks, and here's our total installed cost. And then in this column R is the, the sale price. And so, again, you may not know what your gross margin percentage is currently, but if you could sum up your total install costs versus the sale price of what you're quoting on a door, you could determine on your most popular sizes uh, the gross margin of, of those installs. And that last point on the prior spreadsheet or prior slide, I was showing you that there could be variation between your margins. So in this case, what I would say is if you were to quote perhaps everything at a 38% gross margin, around, you know, just take your costs and divide them by that 1 minus 0.38, that will establish your new pricing at a 38% gross margin. 
and again that way you'll know you're making or quoting at least on every job 38 cents on every dollar of sales revenue that's that's the margin you're quoting at so on, upon completion of your task you will know exactly how much money you're making per job you can better evaluate financial impact to the business if you make a price concession you'll be able to calculate your monthly break-even sales required to break even you can improve your pricing methodologies to have a more consistent profit level and you could check your profit levels on your profit and loss statement and compare your results versus other door companies using the IDA dealer fit data in addition uh, once you have clarity uh, with with what your your profit levels are you could further enhance or uh, develop performance metrics in your business to make more money Additionally, you'll be ready for to, to program your, your profit levels into on-site. Let me explain that a little bit. On October 3rd, 2011, AMAR launched its new internet software program designed specifically to help AMAR dealers grow their business. The program is called OnSite. Essentially, there's three main features within OnSite. There's a site scheduler, a quoting system, and a reporting component. Uh, essentially, the the work that we've done today in teaching you about gross margin analysis it will complement and, and help you when setting up your, your on-site program. Um, I would suggest if you are new to this uh, or have not heard of on-site, contact your AMR sales manager. Uh, this is going to be a great tool to help you in managing and building your business. As we're nearing the end of this presentation, it's now time to set your goals. And I'd like to share with you one of my favorite sayings from Jeff Mick. If you can't measure it, you can't fix it. And essentially, this applies in many aspects of the business, whether it's manufacturing or administration or, or pricing, uh, analyzing your pricing uh, and, and profit levels. Uh, essentially, in, th in this case, understanding and implementing gross margin analysis in your business, it's not rocket science. It's a pricing methodology that can help provide clarity and visibility to assist you in making better business decisions and achieve your financial goals. So before I go I've got to ask who still wants to calculate their pricing using cost markup? Ah, oh, well I see there's still a few faces that look uh, confused out there but don't worry. One, you could watch this video as many times as you like or if you need some additional help feel free to con contact your AMR sales manager or call me. We really care about your business and we want to help you grow. So. Give us a call if you have any questions about this. For those of you that have learned something from this video, take action and implement. I'd also like to hear from you. Understanding margin analysis will pay dividends. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. I hope you were able to learn something about gross margin calculations and analysis. Please send us your feedback, your questions and comments. Uh, we appreciate everything you do for AMAR. Thanks and have a great day.